Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're diving into a real gem, a story from the legendary teaching rounds of Dr. Muhammad Althi. Now, these rounds at Al-Azhar University are famous. I mean, doctors come from all over the world, not just Egypt, to be there. They bring their most challenging, most confusing cases, hoping for an answer. And these aren't just academic exercises. These are real stories where a brilliant diagnosis completely changes a person's life. We see them get better and come back. So let's get into one of those stories. This is a case that really captures that spirit. It's about a medical puzzle that went unsolved for more than 10 years. And it's just such a powerful reminder that sometimes getting the right diagnosis is more potent than any drug you could ever prescribe. All right, so let's set the scene. The patient is a 28-year-old woman, but this whole nightmare for her started way back when she was only 17. For over a decade, she was trapped in the cycle of painful, totally mysterious episodes. And what made it so baffling, so just weird, were the triggers. You'd think it would be from running a marathon or something, right? No. Her attacks were set off by the simplest things. We're talking standing up from a chair, walking a few feet, or doing a little bit of housework. And when an attack hit, it was absolutely brutal. Her entire body would just seize up, totally rigid. She described it as feeling frozen or locked. It came with these severe muscle cramps and overwhelming pain, so bad that she couldn't even stand up straight and would just suddenly fall to the ground. Now here is a huge clue for all the doctors scratching their heads. She tried the usual stuff, you know, standard painkillers like ibuprofen, what we call NSAIDs, and they did absolutely nothing, zero relief. That's a massive red flag that this isn't your typical muscle soreness or inflammation. Something else was going on. So, until one day in 2015, one of these attacks got much, much worse. It turned into a life or death situation. Her kidneys just failed. Her creatinine, which is a key marker we use to check kidney function, shot up to 10. To give you some perspective, a normal level is around 1. 10 is critically high. This meant she had a severe, acute kidney injury and needed multiple rounds of emergency dialysis just to stay alive. So how in the world does something as simple as standing up lead to catastrophic kidney failure? You can see why this case was such a puzzle. This is where putting all those little clues together, where true clinical insight becomes everything. So when you lay out the evidence, the pattern starts to scream that this is not normal. Typical muscle pain, that's from inflammation, and it usually gets better with NSAIDs. Her pain didn't. Typical pain develops after you overdo it. Her pain started the instant she tried to move. All signs were pointing to a fundamental problem with how her muscles were getting energy. Okay, so the doctors had a name for what was happening to her kidneys. It's called rhabdomyolysis. It's basically when your muscles break down so fast and on such a massive scale that they release this protein that literally clogs up the kidneys. But see, that's a consequence, not a cause. The real mystery, the question that was still hanging in the air, was what on earth was causing these attacks in the first place. And then, after all those years, they found it. The answer. The key that unlocked this entire decade-long mystery. The final diagnosis was McCardell disease. It's a rare genetic disorder, and once you know what it is, every single one of her bizarre symptoms suddenly makes perfect sense. So what is actually happening inside the body of someone with McCardell disease? Well, the best way to picture it is this. Imagine your muscles have a full tank of gas, plenty of fuel, but you've lost the key to the car. You can't start the engine. The fuel is right there, but it's completely locked to Dr. Alfie put it so vividly with this one line. The muscle is being asked to work, but it can't get to its fuel. So what does it do? It panics. It enters a state of crisis and starts to break down its own structures, own fibers to get by it literally starts to eat itself. So here's the domino effect happening inside her muscles. Step one, any movement needs energy. Step two, the muscle's first instinct is to grab its stored emergency fuel, which is glycogen. But, and here's the whole problem. Step three, the enzyme, the little key needed to unlock that glycogen is missing. So you get step four, an instant energy crisis. That's the pain, the stiffness, the weakness. But here is where it gets absolutely fascinating. There's a workaround. If a person with Mercados can just push through those first few minutes of pain very gently, or even just pause, the body's circulation has time to catch up. 
it starts delivering other fuels like glucose and fatty acids straight from the bloodstream. The muscles switch over to this new fuel source and suddenly they can keep going with much less pain. It's called the second wind. And this right here is the crucial point. Since there's no cure, no way to just give her that missing enzyme, treatment isn't about pills or medicine. It's all about strategy. It's about creating a personal playbook, one that's built on a deep understanding of this really unique physiology. So what does this playbook look like? Well, the do's are all about learning how to move safely. You always, always start with a very slow, gradual warm-up. That's how you gently trigger that second wind. And because the muscles need fuel delivered by the blood, some people find that having a sugary snack about 15 minutes before they exercise gives their body that ready-to-use energy source. And what not to do is just as important. Anything that demands a huge sudden burst of energy, like sprinting or heavy lifting, is a no-go. Pushing through severe pain is the absolute biggest danger. That's what leads to that massive muscle breakdown. And of course, avoiding those NSAID painkillers is critical because they can cause even more harm to the kidneys during an attack. Patients basically learn to become expert observers of their own bodies. And there is one warning sign that is non-negotiable. If their urine turns dark, like the color of tea or cola, that's the visual sign of muscle proteins in the system. It means get to a doctor immediately to protect the kidneys. So what was the final outcome here? After more than a decade of fear, of confusion, of life-threatening emergencies, this diagnosis completely transformed her life. Her entire journey shifted. She went from being a victim of this terrifying unknown condition to being the empowered manager of it. This case just makes it so incredibly clear. For a condition like McCardo's disease, the single most powerful treatment you can offer is simply a correct diagnosis. Finally, understanding the why behind all her symptoms gave her the how. How to work with her body instead of constantly fighting against it. It gave her back control. And that really leaves us with this final thought to chew on. This story shows us that sometimes, knowledge isn't just power. Knowledge is the prescription. When there's no miracle cure, the clarity, the understanding, and the strategy that come from a diagnosis, well, that can be the most profound form of healing there is.